Incoming transmission from Novaria. Request denied. Setting new course for Kalistan. Many decisions lie ahead. None of them easy. And with Ashley, we now have a complete squad. Let's go squander it by immediately screwing up and getting myself killed again. <laughs> begins at the far end of this trench. Oops, no. Whoa, bad, 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 bad. I reflexively hit X because that's often, I think that's take all in some other game. But X has reduced it to Omni Gel, and A is take all. Which is a bit of a surprise, honestly. So we got our first, piece, our first pieces of equipment, so I can show you this screen. Right now, it seems almost logical and decent. Uh, because it's nice and, I do like that it's categorical. I like categories of sorting in games for equipment and stuff like that. So here we have armor, assault rifle, shotgun, pistol, sniper rifle, grenades, omni, tool, biotic, amp. All in a circle together. It gets messy when they start getting, when they all start showing up. So every, every weapon and armor in this game has a code name, so as, as you see here, Onyx and Scorpion. And they have a level number. So right now they all have Roman numerals 1. And as time goes on, they'll have 2, 3, 4, all the way up to like 9 or 10. I think they stop, I think 10 might be the cap in this game, or something close to 10. Uh, and on the path to that number, uh, you get the same names over and over again, with slightly changing numbers. And each, so basically each name represents some kind of specialization, and the number represents the very, the vague power level of the item compared to, so that if you get higher numbers, I'm pretty sure they're just universally better than previous numbers. Also, they look different from each other. So here's the iconic N7 armor that everyone is merchandising everywhere, and you see on the cover, and you see on everything, and here's me immediately replacing it, and we might never see it again. <laughs> now, I, I think, I think N7 does show up on other stuff throughout the game, but... It is funny to immediately replace that thing with like what looks like a weird rejected Metal Gear Solid 3 uh, clothing set. Looks completely different. I, we apparently just found gear in the field and switched it in, into it in the middle of a combat mission. They're telling me how to pause the game there. So we saw this guy previously. This is the person that, got, that just got stabbed up there. And that's just nightmarish. It's a really cool setup, because you don't know what these things are yet, or what any of these aliens are, or what's going on, but immediately they're like, they're putting people on spires and stabbing them into the air? That has to serve a purpose, because you wouldn't just, that's a, that's a really, really inefficient and a weird way to kill things when you have guns already. Which means that it must serve some purpose besides just killing them. And that's horrifying, there's two more of them over here, so it's definitely not, that wasn't like improv over there, it's happening over and over again, apparently. Oh, now they tell me about cover. <laughs> after I basically died for not using it previously. Unfortunately, press the left stick towards the rock to take cover is not a great system. <laughs> so there are, this is one of the parts where the sequels got some things better than the original game, and that is that eventually in the sequels they realized uh, pressing a button to toggle cover kind of works better in many ga in most games than, than otherwise. They're teaching me how to use the grenade I used on accident earlier. Because in this game, you basically, like, walk into cover. And you, as you could tell from what just happened there, I had trouble getting into cover and walked around it instead when pushing into it. And that's too bad. And they never patched it. They never changed it. And, that's, that's, and it could have really done with a nice press A to toggle cover or something. Storm lets you sprint at high speed for short distances. Press and hold A while moving to Storm. And that's a bad idea. I'm going to die. Instead, I'm going to hang out over here where I'm not going to die and shoot the bad guys. Is that an invisible guy? Or was I? No. I was just seeing like an effect or something. I thought I saw an invisible dude over there. I'm like, that's... Are we doing that? <laughs> Pistols are nice. I can get used to this. I've never liked machine guns in video games across the board, really. I've, I, but a fair number of games, like Halo and Destiny, of course, I get used to the idea of using pistols, and I like the idea. Is it still showing me a waypoint for because I didn't take cover correctly? <laughs> I think it is. You did it! <laughs> it did a musical cue based on me taking cover. That's funny. That's funny. I never- I don't know- I didn't, I didn't know anything about that happening. So this, this is the dig site then. This is where the scientists were supposed to be. Where they were supposed to get the beacon. 
It's actually several new weapons, so I should probably take a, a moment to customize before we trigger a scene here. I have three more points! Let's pump points into Intimidate. Uh, generally, I'll probably keep that maxed out throughout the playthrough, whenever the, uh, the cap increases. Because it, it opens dialogue options, and who doesn't like dialogue options? We'll go into Decryption to unlock Electronics. So actually, let's... Maybe undo that a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Overload! So, I, and I now have a point of electronics, so now I have the ability... So, so as I go through this, it'll increase my shield capacity, but overload makes me over... Uh, it does 200 damage to enemy shields. So, shields almost always take damage before your normal health, and a lot of enemies will have shields, so being able to basically blow up your opponent's shields in the field actually comes in handy quite a bit. We'll put another point to intimidate when I get the chance later. So you leveled up also. Oh, I think in this game actually our our level ups are are synchronized with each other, which is not super common in a lot of games, but it's a nice touch. Let's uh let's give Kaiden some throwing barrier, so a little offensive capability, and Ashley is all weapons all the time. Going into combat armor, we'll give her her first shield boost. Oh uh, yeah, restores thirty percent of your shield per second. That's a big deal. It's rough because as a as a soldier, you don't really have much of a shield to begin with unless you're wearing some kind of equipment or be, or being buffed by something because they don't have the electronic skill. But restoring 30% of it per, per second basically gives them like a almost like a short-term uh, invincibility boost. How long does it last? Two seconds. So it never, it's not very effective at first. It means that you get 30. It means you restore 60% of your shield. Which is not great yet, but down here we'll get heavy armor, which will let her actually use better equipment, and that'll help her tankiness just in general. And then eventually it becomes 40% of your shield, and then 50% of, uh, of your shield per second. It never gets longer, apparently. Some, I think some, there might be something else that affects the duration, or it might just be a quick shield re uh, regeneration, and that's it. I'll give her her first assault rifle ability. Overkill allows long bursts of accurate assault fi rifle fire, which is a weird contradiction because it's an assault rifle, but I guess that's why it's a power. All right, so Ashley's using her lancer. That's good. So she's already got the the right weapon. Caden, oh, Caden's using a lancer. That's weird because he's not trained to use one. He should probably be using a pistol. I think the AI switched it. I've been sticking with the pistol. So this is the weapon tree we saw before. This is the skill tree. I don't think I actually showed you this before. This is where every single skill people have shows up. I think because of how many slots they give you, I think you actually don't have to worry about running out of slots. I think you actually can fit everything here. Could be wrong, but I think that's how it goes. So here's our overkill and shield and shield boost. So I can just I can find information on them to to give myself context so I don't have to lose track of what these things mean. But basically, at any point, I can hold right bumper to pause combat, and like right now, game the game is paused, and I can issue an I can issue an Ashley uh, order to Ashley and Caden and Shepard, and I can free aim in this thing. Like my character doesn't rotate to face my camera, but I can like highlight an enemy and then say use overkill, and they'll target that exact enemy with overkill. And so I could say you overkill that guy, and you sabotage that guy, and I'll use throw on that guy, and then I'll let go of the button, and all of them will happen all at once. And that's really neat. I really enjoy that concept. Let's check mapping. Oh, right, I can pick one... I can pick one skill that I can just use on the fly without opening the menu, which is nice to have. So I have barrier, which gives me some... Anti... some... it's extra shield. I have overload, which damages enemy shields. I have throw, which is just fun force push moment. And then this is the enemy weapon damager. I think I might be able to map... no. In later games, you can also map your party member's skills so that you can press... you can just press a hotkey to use the one skill selected for that particular party member on the fly without opening the entire thing, which is nice. Unfortunately, because my memory has failed me, I may need to look at the... Oh. I don't know if there's actually anywhere that'll tell me. Unfortunately. Nope. We'll just wait for a pop-up to happen, or I'll experiment a little bit. Let's see. There's only so many buttons in the damn game, first of all. There we go. So, holding RB opens this. Tapping it uses the skill instantly, if it's on cooldown. Which it may- which- it, and the cooldown takes a little while. But then I'll just use the force to push somebody on the fly. This is the dig site. The beacon was right here and must have been moved. 
By who? Our side or the Geth? Hard to say. Maybe we'll know more after we check out the research camp. You think anyone got out of here alive? If they were lucky. Maybe hiding up in the camp. It's just on the top of this ridge, up the ramps. Impaling Change of plans, Shepard. There's a small spaceport up ahead. I want to check it out. I'll wait for you there. There's a small uh, spaceport coming up. Oh, and it's on fire. That's a good sign. I'm sure we'll be fine. Looks like they hit the camp hard. It's a good place for an ambush. Keep your guard up. Oh god, they're still alive! What did the Geth do to them? Well, that's terrifying. <laughs> so now we know. We, see, we saw a human go on it, then we saw like weird burned bodies on them. Now we've got uh, cyberpunk skeleton zombies, kind of. And that, that's not a pleasant reveal at all. Oh, he went away. Whoops. Okay, time to start using fun things. Can sabotage even work on these guys? Yeah, it's weapons. I don't, I don't really expect that. We can throw that guy. And we can overkill that guy. And I'll use barrier, which I think affects my whole party. No, just me. Still. Okay, maybe a little less than impressed with the pistol all of a sudden. <laughs> Turns out when you have robot monsters, they may not care about taking shots, to be fair. So this place is an absolute mess. That one looks toppled over. Yeah, the door's on top, so you're not reaching that. But we, have a do we have two open doors here. Oh, that one just opens. More equipment. I'll go a little while before I, I swap in new equipment because uh, we find we find it a lot. <laughs> I, I often would go an entire mission and then go through all my gear after the mission's over instead because otherwise it just takes so much time. Alright, now for the decryption. Some ob objects are locked and you can use decryption on them. I'm just going to go ahead and let, let this happen. Yep, it's Simon Says. Or not quite Simon Says, you just press, the, it's a quick time event, you press the buttons as they come up. Uh, it does eventually get faster and tougher, to the point where it might actually be something you can mess up at. But uh, you can also use Omni Gel uh, to hack through it, so if you get rid of the stuff that you use, to, uh, if, you, if you throw away equipment and turn it into Omni Gel, you can use it to, like, instantly hack things when you have the right amounts. Humans, thank the Maker. Hurry, close the door before they come back. You know you're playing a Bioware game when someone says the phrase, Thank the Maker. Don't worry. We'll protect you. Thank you. I think we'll be okay now. It looks like everyone's gone. You're Dr. Warren, the one in charge of the excavation. Do you know what happened to the beacon? It was moved to the spaceport this morning. Manuel and I stayed behind to help pack up the camp. When the attack came, the Marines held them off long enough for us to hide. They gave their lives to save us. No one is saved. The age of humanity is ended. Soon, only ruin and corpses will remain. What's wrong with your assistant? Manuel has a brilliant mind, but he's always been a bit... unstable. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? To see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape? No hope? No. I am not mad. I'm the only sane one left. I gave him an extra dose of his meds after the attack. What else can you tell me about the attack? It all happened so fast. One second we were gathering up our equipment, the next we were hiding in the shed while the Geth swarmed over the camp. Agents of the Destroyers, bringers of darkness, heralds of our extinction. We could hear the battle outside, gunfire, screams, I thought it would never end. Then everything went quiet. We just sat there, too afraid to move, until you came along. Did you notice a Turian in the area? I saw him, the Prophet, leader of the enemy. He was here, before the attack. That's impossible. Nihilus was with us in the Normandy before the attack. He couldn't have been here. 
I I'm sorry, Manuel's still a bit unsettled. We haven't seen your Turian. We've been hiding in here since the attack. So either Nihilus is completely insane, or there's another Turian, since they are an entire race of people. Can you tell me anything about the beacon? It's some type of data module from a galaxy-wide communications network. Remarkably well-preserved. It could be the greatest scientific discovery of our lifetime. Miraculous new technologies, groundbreaking medical advances. Who knows what secrets are locked inside? We have unearthed the heart of evil. Awakened the beast. Unleashed the darkness. Manuel, please. This isn't the time. Williams, take us to the spaceport. You can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. Night is falling. The darkness of eternity. Hush, Manuel. Go lie down. You'll feel better once the medication kicks in. And so we have multiple pieces of information. So we have a hint that there may be another Turian, or Manuel, or Manuel's just crazy. But Manuel is, seems to be crazy, but he also went, he seems to have been in contact with the Beacon, which may suggest some of his unhinged character. But the, we're also given reason to think the Beacon's important, because it, while we keep finding pieces of Pro-3 in technology, and that's how, like, that's the beginning part where we talked about how, like, the Mass Effect, and how he was ma uh, had this major discovery that led them, that connected them with the rest of the galactic world all of a sudden, like, that's... Protein technology is how that happens. Like that's that's the, all the important special things that we find that make the, uh, this crazy space universe work for us. Because otherwise, we were just humans on Earth before then. Uh, so the idea of instead of finding technology, finding an actual data archive is kind of a big deal. Did I see an inspection point on this? There it is. They're they're pretty frequent with the chests in some of these areas. Saren. Nihilus. This isn't your mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. I wasn't expecting to find the Geth here. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control. And we hear a gunshot that we have no context for. I mean, we the we the we the audience know exactly what's happening, but uh, the shepherd has no idea to, that they even need to put any weight on that particular sound effect. What is that? Off in the distance. It's a ship. Look at the size of it. It's a cyberspace quid with apparently. Oh, weird. I've never really zoomed in on it before like that, but its limbs almost look translucent, which is a weird thing that I wasn't sure is intentional. I'm gonna switch to my shotgun, because we're getting attacked by zombie monsters, so that always makes more sense in this context. Also, I have bad aim, but let's just go past that. Probably walking into a combat situation, so maybe I should check to see if I have a better... Yeah. So here we have our stats. Instead of the usual ammo you get, you get shots per uh, before overheat. So that's it, it helps measure how much the uh, heat thing fills up. So this gives me less accuracy but more damage, which is, is fitting enough for a shotgun. Same thing goes for the assault rifle, but I don't really have much reason to use an assault rifle, so I'll give it to Ashley. And then we should have better pistols too. And I'll selfishly prioritize myself over my friend, Caden. Oh, I have two of them though, so I don't have to worry about that. There we go. So I'm prioritizing damage over accuracy and overheat, which... Uh, it's not always a good idea. <laughs> I think Ashley is the only person that can use sniper rifles in this crew. And I think none of the armor is particularly great at the moment. Okay. So that was, that ga that kind of gave me chills seeing that again. So we see Saren, what, which is my, maybe my favorite villain in uh, video games. Although Gladys is also pretty great, so it's really hard to choose sometimes. And... He's off-putting. Like, they intentionally give you a, uh... They intentionally give you a Turian to meet first, in the form of Nihilus, who is presumed dead now, because Saren presumably wouldn't miss a headshot from directly behind somebody. So the only Turian we've met so far is dead. 
But Saren, uh, look, is clearly a Turian, just like, uh, just like Nihilus, but he's covered in weird, creepy cables and stuff. And he's, like, weirdly, he's got, like, a weird blue tinge to everything. And so, what you're supposed to figure out from this is that, like, they, they gave you a, an example of what an alien looks like, so you can re reference that sort of thing. And then they look, have you look at Saren right after they just showed you husks. And husks are these creepy zombie monsters that are all blue and cybernetic looking. And so you, you see that Saren is a weird cross between a husk and a Turian at this point. Visually, like that's the two concepts being mixed together. Everybody stay calm out there. We're coming out, we're not armed. Is it safe? Are they gone? We took care of them. Those things were crawling all around the shed. They would have found us for sure. We owe you our lives. Ah, uh, I still can't believe it. When we saw that ship, I thought it was all over. It showed up right before the attack. I knew it was trouble the second I saw it, so we made a break for the sheds. Tell me everything you remember about the attack. The three of us were working the crops when that ship showed up. We just saw it and ran. I don't know what happened to the rest of the crew. They were by the garage, over near the spaceport, right where that ship came down. No way they survived. You don't know that! We survived! If they made it to the garage, they could have had a fighting chance! Do you know anything about the Prothean beacon they dug up? We're just farmers. We heard they found something out there, but it never really mattered to us. Not until now. What else can you tell me about the ship you saw? I was too busy running to get a clear look at it. I think it landed over near the spaceport. Tell them about the noise, Cole. That awful noise! It was emitting some kind of signal as it descended. It sounded like the shriek of the damned. Only, it was coming from inside your own head. It was probably trying to block communications. Whatever it was, it felt like it was tearing right through my skull. It almost made it impossible to think. I have to go. Hey, Cole, we're just a bunch of farmers. These guys are soldiers. Maybe we should give them the stuff. Jeez, Blake, you've got to learn when to shut up. You have something to tell me, Cole? Some guys at the spaceport were running a small smuggling ring. Nothing major. In exchange for a cut of the profits, we let them store packages in our sheds. What kind of packages? I found a pistol. Figured it would come in handy if those things came back. But you'll probably get more use out of it than we will. This should help. Let's move out. So uh, that I had a paragon I had a paragon and renegade moments to start pressing them for more if I wanted to there. I also go inside here. Anything cool? This should be easy. Unless I screw it up. So leveling up electronics will help me hack into doors like this. So it, it uh, benefits to have that kind of capability. Otherwise, I think I... I think I might have had to switch to the right party member or something to do it otherwise. I don't really remember very well. But it, I, I think I'm realizing midway through this playthrough already, like, this actually might be one of my favorite intro missions in a video game, especially for, like, an RPG story. Because instead of doing the whole, like, we're hanging out in a town, and we're going to slowly introduce to you all the lore concepts, and explain your mission to you, and who you are, and then sit you out on your first mission, and, like, all that, like, a really slow start, it does the, just, it does the approach of just throwing you right into the mix of things, which is common, but oftentimes throwing people into the mix of things is done in it rather inelegantly. And I think that this was actually done pretty cleverly, and like there's a lot of cool ways of handling the mystery around you. Like you, like you have multi-stage reveals going on constantly. Like, what's a specter? That guy's a specter. Maybe you'll be a specter. There he is. But then on, t on like on, t you have the they have the multi-stage husk thing. You see a guy get stabbed. Why are they stabbing him? What are those robot monsters? They something called the Geth. What are the Geth? And like you keep getting branching questions based on things you're seeing that are being often answered in a methodical way. So you, you see three-stage husk, where you see a normal person on a husk, then you see a weird charred corpse on... Like, you see a normal person on a spike, then charred corpse on a spike, then nightmare cybernetic corpse on a spike. You see Nihilus, a, a Turian, who just looks like a weird, like, lobster man thing. Oh god, I have friends. I haven't had notifications on any of my consoles in so long. Uh, you have, like, all your... You, get, you see this weird lobster man creature, and you're like, that's a Turian. Okay, I, I see what a Turian is, but then the next Turian you see is covered in a weird robot cables, and has blue gl glowy bits, and what looks like camera lenses for eyes, and you're like, that's not what Turian looks like last time I saw. That looks like the monster I just fought. What does that mean? 
And like, the, and then you see giant tentacle squid thing in this air, and like, there's so many questions, but but every time they answer, give you a new question, they're also usually kind of answering one at the same time, so it's, it's like a flow to it that's actually really nicely designed, and I think that more thought went into this specific mission than most people would ever think actually went into it, because it feels standard. You don't, a lot of the best games don't ha give you reason to think that they're doing anything interesting if they're doing it well enough. There we go. Notifications off. Fixed it. That's what I do on every console for obvious reasons. That was really off-putting to see that that was there. There we go. I'm like, no! D bad notifications. Get out of here. Alright, well, Nihilus is dead. Something's moving over behind those crates. Wait! Don't! Don't shoot! I'm one of you! I'm human! I know it's another aside, and some people get exasperated by this, but I think Nihilus is really cool because it's a subversion of a trope. A lot of video games have you meet a super powerful, awesome character that's on your team and make you want to aspire to be like them, and they kind of set that up and you're like, this guy's a specter, he's better than you, maybe you'll be a specter. But you never see Nihilus do anything cool, he never accomplishes anything, and then he gets executed from behind the head without ever actually getting anything done during the mission. And that's the only that's the only example of a specter you've been introduced to so far. So that entire that entire uh, trope is just thrown away immediately. What are you doing sneaking around back there? I am sorry, I was hiding from those creatures. My name's Powell. I saw what happened to that Turian. The other one shot him. What the hell are you talking about? There were two Turians here. Your friend and another one he called Saren. I think they knew each other. Your friends seem to relax. He let his guard down. And Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. I I'm just lucky he didn't see me behind the crates. Where'd Saren go after he killed Nihilus? He jumped on the cargo train and headed over to the other platform. Probably going after the beacon. I knew that beacon was trouble. Everything's gone to hell since we found it. First that damn mothership showed up, then the attack. They killed everyone. Everyone. If I hadn't been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. How come you're the only one who survived? Why didn't anyone else try to hide behind the crates? They never had a chance. I... I... I was already behind the crates when the attack started. Wait a minute. You were hiding behind the crates before the attack? I... Sometimes I need a nap to get through my shift. I... I sneak off behind the crates to grab 40 winks where the supervisor can't find me. You survived because you're lazy? If you hadn't snuck off for that nap, you'd probably be dead just like all the others. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't really want to think about it. Tell me about the Geth attack. It was quick. One minute that ship was descending, the next... Those Geth were swarming over the platform, thousands of them. They must have been inside that mothership. They shot anything that moved. It was a massacre. Is there anything else you can tell me about the beacon? They brought it here this morning. We loaded it up onto the train and shipped it to the other platform. Hard to believe that was only a few hours ago. Feels like a whole other life. Tell me about this mothership you saw. I I've never seen anything like it before. It... It was huge. Landed over near that platform. The whole place got dark as it came down. And it was making this noise, this this sound that bored right into your brain. That's what woke me up. The attack came a few minutes later. We need to find that beacon before it's too late. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. I, I, I can't stay here. I need to get away from all this. So we're set here on a secret mission. It's it's called a shakedown run, but we have a we have a specter on the crew, so it's clearly something more than that. And then all this happens, where a squid, a, a giant mechanical squid monster, looking crazy ship shows up. Level three hazards because of the fire. Oh yeah, I'm burning myself slowly. Watch out for that. Oh yeah, the meter fills up. Caden, get out of the fire. Get out of the fire. So this, oh, hey. So we show up on what's supposed to be a shakedown mission, that, but we have a specter, so something's up. And 
it turns into this thing where the the an ancient machine race not seen for 200 years, originally created by the Quarians, just shows up and it's attacking everyone and turning them into cyber monsters. And they're accompanied by a Turian cyber monster, who's also somebody who Nihilus knows, which means he's which like he should be a specter. I think they said that he was a second like this this mission doesn't need a second specter, I think is what they said. But either way he knows Nihilus, so he at least has some direct relation to him. And we're going after a pr now a Prothean beacon, which has ties to like ancient technology and everything that we don't really have access to anymore. And shit is more or less at this point uh, going down. <laughs> Let's see. Can you sabotage this? I wouldn't try it at this distance. Yeah, I wouldn't try it at this distance. Just give myself the boost. I could try a, a sniper rifle just to give it a shot. That's always amusing. That's a bad idea. This was a bad idea. Okay, that was a good time for you to use, to push. You use push, so I'm happy you did that. I'm gonna sabotage this weapon. There we go. That'll work out poorly for him. And... Yeah, I was midway through my ability, so I was blocked. I'm gonna switch to my shotgun, because... Let's not play with things I don't know how to use. As adorable as it is when I try to use things I can't use. Oh! I meleeed him to death. <laughs> so, if you pull the... Much like, uh, I think GTA does it. If you hit, uh... I'm moving really fast, oh my god. If you use, uh, the, if you pull the trigger when somebody's like right in front of you, your character just automatically melees them, which is kind of a nice touch. No need for shotgun, like, they're really far away now. There's a few explosive looking things around here. Where are they? I don't see them anymore, actually. I think I might have gone past them. So I'm currently fatigued from running, so I can't do that for a while. Over overkill still recharging? Okay. Let's see. I'm actually not close enough to target them yet. I can take shots that are ineffective at this range, or I can run for it. So I'm gonna run for it! Hello, friend. Now I'm in target range. If you see the triangle, you're in range where generally your abilities are gonna now work correctly. He's got a shield, so overload works here. Fall probably by overkill. Just make a mess of that particular enemy, if I can. I'll use Barrier because my shields are down again. Thankfully, I can just get a ridiculous amount of shield all in one go if I want to. I just realized I'm accidentally targeting the shield that's next to him and not the actual enemy. That heck, that hexagonal shield thing is what I was targeting when I, I meant to target the Geth himself. Gotcha. There's something really cool about the run. The camera angle works just right where it feels like you're going super fast. So right around now, I actually quit playing. Set the charges. Destroy the entire colony. Leave no evidence that we were here. So there we had floating Saren, which so the implication there is that he is then using the beacon. So he beat us to it, and now his goal is to blow this whole place up so no one else can use it. Demolition charges. But we have no idea what to think about that yet. Hurry! We need to find them all and shut them down. I think this is where I got where I gave up the first time I ever played this game, and it took me about three months to finally come back to it and then learn to love it eventually. But uh, the. This time limit, crossed with a lot of enemies shooting at you, crossed with bad cover controls and awkward aiming, made me kind of made me bounce off the game in a way that uh, took a while to recover from. That happens with a few games. Oh, nice use there. Let's see. I can take out his, his shield with overload, which will make him easy to go down quicker. I think he was just using a rocket launcher, so it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to read apply my barrier before I go down from incoming rockets. I don't think that works through the shield. I was kind of hoping to disable his, uh, disable his rockets. I mean, he might not even be the right enemy for that, actually. 
One down. Is there still a guy behind that shield? Oh yeah, I can see him there. I'll just hammer him for a while. Very close to going down. Went ahead and used a Metagel. They love their shields. I might be able to hit, use Overkill on this guy to get rid of him. I don't think it targeted him correctly. Whoop! That's bad. That's really bad, actually. Okay. Oh, I miss. I missed targeted. That's really unfortunate. I can't aim the correct way. <laughs> there are elements of the shooting in this game that are not up to par, and that's unfortunate. So I'm at, I'm beyond the uh, effective range of my own weapons right now. I could try using a sniper rifle, but instead of trying to make that work, it's probably best to just apply a barrier and just go for a jog. There we go. Wrong one. Switch my shotgun. There we go. Close the gap. Gives me a little bit more to work with. The enemy, your allies just kind of follow you oftentimes. I'm gonna try to take this guy out. Point blank range. There we go. Wow, he's durable. Once the first few are taken out, the, the threat really subsides. And Caden's down. Generally, people will get back up whenever you finish a fight. And once I get some proper shield upgrades, that won't really be as, as common of an occurrence. But right now, everyone's made of tissue paper, including my character. Which is part of why I like the idea of getting some points into electronics early on. And kind of beelined for that. Give myself a little bit more of a buffer to work with. This music's amazing, though! Ah! Freaking... My friend Andrew hates Mass Effect, all three games, but he owns the soundtracks because they're so good. Like, that's... The freaking soundtracks to these games go beyond the games. <laughs> they actually give you a surprisingly huge amount of time to do this objective. Because it is still a tutorial mission. Hey, Caden. You all better? And you're so agonizingly close behind Saren throughout, that, throughout the entire mission, but, you're, but you know your character doesn't even know he exists. Alright, so we clearly have husks coming our way. I'm gonna try to wait for them, if I can. Actually, I'm gonna back up. This is a terrible spot for cover. There we go. Wow, you really do move fast. Here we can try to shoot them as they come after us. Unlike in many zombie games, these enemies are not infinitely spawning. They're coming off of very specific spikes, because that's how, that's where they were created. We, and you see them go down off the spikes if you're looking at them when it happens. So you can just sort of ride out that first wave of melee attackers and then deal with the actual foes you were already having to deal with. So I think I can overload... Oh, and now it's gone. I was gonna say, like, we should overload the shield. Sabotage his weapon. Just blow him away. Blow him straight to hell. Gotcha. Yeah, the pistol's accuracy is actually awful. <laughs> at this at this stage, at least. Like, it's a huge open fan. And I think you need to train better to get any progress there. Admittedly, I am, I get so used to shotguns that I, uh, I'm not used to aiming. <laughs> I'm not used to actually having to deal with a, 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 an attack cone. I'm usually using powers against distant enemies and then shooting the close-by enemies with a shotgun. And oftentimes, allies will have enough, uh, enough other options for attacking that you don't need to really be an active participant in, in, in ranged combat. The game also likes indoor environments, which reduces the, uh, current problem I'm, I'm having with the uh, long-range enemies to an extent. Gonna just trying to avoid the, uh... Trying to avoid the beacon that's our primary objective for a while, because there's clearly stuff around here. Let's see, I can, I, I can sheath this, right? Yeah. Get a better, further away third-person camera for nicer exploration. There we 
There we go. So we're quickly stocking up on a number of different up of uh, number of different upgrades. I'll cycle through those a bit in a moment. If memory serves, I think the moment I touch that thing, it's gonna leave this planet. It'll be the end of the mission entirely. So I'm just gonna try to look around a little bit. Nope, that's it. That's it. All right. So we definitely had at least one level up. It's interesting, does electronics pack? Yeah, electronics caps out there. That's the furthest I can take it at my level. So we'll have to make some progress before I can go deeper into that. But at the moment, I have a shielded, uh, shield capacity boosted by 30, and I'm good. I'm cool with that. Pump up intimidate, and I'll probably start putting points into shotgun. Reducing cooldowns obviously doesn't hurt either. That's the redu <laughs> reduce the cooldown time of throw, lift, barrier, stasis, sabotage, overload, first aid, and neural shock, while increasing pistol damage. It's a lot of effects. And then they just summarize it later by being saying biotic and tech talents. But yeah, putting points into this skill will just give me a cooldown redu reduction on all skills, better pistols, and it ends off with a marksman, which gives me an upgrade to pistols. Only available when using pistols. It gives you 60% bonus accuracy and increases your firing rate by one per second. And lets you shoot more without having to do the entire cooldown element. So there's good things to be had there. And in shotguns. For now, I might go further into Barrier, because it makes the duration longer. Although Throw does damage. I'll, I'll, go, I'll get a point into, into Throw. It's an offensive casting spell, basically, which is nice to have. But go into Assault training a little bit more. We'll eventually unlock Fitness. If you get Fitness, that gives you bonus health, so it's not a bad idea to go that far down. And Adrenaline Burst is a really powerful skill. I actually specifically chose not to be a Vanguard this playthrough because the Vanguard gets this soldier skill, Adrenaline Burst, and I think it actually might be slightly overpowered. It's a skill that resets all of your cooldowns. So what I found is in my previous playthroughs of Mass Effect, I would use every single skill I had available to me at the beginning of the fight, then use Adrenaline Burst, and then start using all of them again, and then oftentimes the fight would be over because I had so many different skills to go through that I could then reset every two minutes to, do twi to use twice. But uh, on the soldier itself, it's actually more balanced because the soldier isn't a crazy biotic superpower with a whole bunch of different skills. They just have their soldier skills, which is quite different. So she's actually not trained with the sniper rifles, apparently. Yeah, unlock sniper rifles. So I think she actually sucks with her sniper rifle, too, for now. I'm going to probably put a point, some points into her pistol skill, since that's like her primary way of interacting with combat. Meanwhile, I can keep dumping into the uh, first aid skill for, yeah, that gets us down to medicine, which reduces the cooldown of first aid, and then also gives him neural shock, knock out an organic enemy for one second, and inflicts toxic damage, so it gives him an anti-organic attack while also pumping up his first aid skill, which is kind of a nice, I kind of, it's, a, it's a build I kind of like having for that character. I like, I actually like my character, by the way. Uh, when I find that when I'm customizing a character, I hate looking at them, and I'm never ha never happy. But then I come by and see the character days later. I'm like, oh, actually, that's yeah, I'm happy with how that turned out. So let's find out what Saren caused so much pain for. Normandy. The beacon is secure. This is amazing. Actual working Prothean technology. Unbelievable. It wasn't doing anything like that when they dug it up. Something must have activated it. Roger, Normandy. Standing by.
We identified the ship that touched down on Eden Prime, the Normandy, a human alliance vessel. It was under the command of Captain Anderson. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. 